What's up guys? It's a great day to be alive and it's a great day to keep a testicle alive. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Testicular torsion. We're going to be talking about how these patients will present, what risk factors to look out, how to diagnose, how to manually reduce torsion, and what is the definitive treatment for these patients. But before we do, I just want to quickly reintroduce myself. My name is Gray Phelps and I'm a licensed physician assistant practicing in emergency medicine. I just recently partnered with Andrew Reed, the founder of PA Boards, and we're really excited to bring you guys free educational content on the YouTube and the podcast. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that now. So quickly, let's briefly go over the normal anatomy of the scrotum because it will later prove to be important when understanding the mechanism behind this testicular emergency. Here you can see the testicle, tunica vaginalis, epididymitis, spermatic cord, and appendix testes. Testicular torsion results when you have inadequate fixation of the lower pole of the testes to the tunica vaginalis. When this occurs, the testicle can twist around the spermatic cord, cutting off blood supply to the testicle. If not recognized promptly, it can result in serious consequences. Testicular torsion has two peak incidences, a small increase in the neonatal period and a large increase during puberty, with approximately 65% of cases occurring between 12 and 18 years of age. This increased incidence during adolescence is thought to be due to the increased weight of the testes during puberty. But ultimately, guys, it can occur at any age. Risk factors for testicular torsion include testicular trauma, age, vigorous physical activity, and cremaster contraction during sleep. So now let's talk about how these patients are going to present. Patients will classically present with abrupt onset of severe testicular or scrotal pain. However, they occasionally will complain of inguinal or lower abdominal pain as their only presenting complaint. Pain will be associated with nausea and vomiting and will be constant unless the patient's testicle is torsing and detorsing. A typical presentation in children is for the patient to awake in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the night with severe scrotal pain, which is likely due to the cremaster contraction with nocturnal stimulation, more commonly referred to as wet dreams, with subsequent torsion. You need to ask these patients if they've had any similar episodes that might suggest intermittent torsion in the past. Other presentations that are common are testicular pain that occurs several hours after vigorous physical activity or any minor trauma to the testicles. On physical exam, the classical findings will be a high riding, horizontally lying testicle. This is because the spermatic cord shortens from the twisting, pulling the testicle higher. The horizontal lie is classically termed the bell clapper deformity. The reason being is because in this deformity, the testicle lacks its normal attachment to the tunica vaginalis, as seen in this picture. The deformity then leaves the testicle horizontal and free to swing around and rotate within the tunica vaginalis like a gong inside of a bell. Other classical physical examination findings include an absent cremasteric reflex, a reactive hydrocele, or no relief of pain or increased pain with scrotal elevation. This is also known as a negative friend sign, but it's not reliable at making this diagnosis. Also, the testicle will be firm, swollen, and tender. So now we know how these patients are going to present and what to look out for on physical exam, but how do we manage these patients and what studies do we order for an ambiguous exam? Since the diagnosis can be made clinically, in the event that your patient has an obvious testicular torsion, call up your urologist and have them take the patient immediately to surgery for detorsion and fixation. Document in your chart the time you called and prep the patient for surgery. However, sometimes testicular torsion will not be overwhelmingly evident on physical exam, but your clinical suspicion is high. For example, let's say you have an adult who has an acute onset of scrotal pain two hours after running 10 miles. He's got an absent cremasteric reflex on physical exam and a very tender testicle to palpation, and you're pretty sure he has testicular torsion, but he doesn't have the classic high-riding testicle on physical exam. Well, in this case, you still need to call up your urologist and have him come evaluate the patient immediately and or take them to surgery. You can go ahead and call your ultrasound tech and get an emergent testicular ultrasound with color Doppler to confirm torsion, but only if it will not delay definitive surgical treatment. If the urologist is unable to see the patient immediately for fixation in the operating room and you have confirmed testicular torsion clinically or by ultrasound, you should attempt to manually detours the testicle. This is because observational studies of manual detorsion in children who are awaiting surgical correction showed that manual detorsion prior to surgery increased the probability of testicular salvage. Delays in torsion of even a few hours can lead to higher rates of testicular non-viability. Typically, if detorsion is performed within four to six hours, you have 100% viability of the testicle. 
detorsion after 12 hours, 20% viability, and detorsion after 24 hours, 0% viability. So in the patient who has confirmed torsion clinically or via ultrasound and emergent surgical correction cannot be done immediately, manual detorsion should be attempted after properly sedating the patient because this procedure can be very painful. The testes usually rotate medially, so you can manually detors the patient by rotating it out towards the thigh. The best way to remember this is detorsion is similar to opening a book. You will want to grasp the testicle and rotate it towards the thigh. One or two full 360 degree turns should be done since the degree of torsion ranges from 180 to 720 degrees. You will know this procedure is successful when you have relief of pain, a lower position of the testes, with the testes no longer in the horizontal position. In the event of successful detorsion, go ahead and repeat the testicular ultrasound to confirm good flow and call your urologist to see if he still wants to take them to the OR immediately. These patients will still need surgical fixation to prevent reoccurrence, but your urologist may want to fix it first thing in the morning if you have a successful detorsion with no evidence of torsion or flow abnormalities on the Doppler. However, in the minority of patients, their testicle will be rotated laterally, and if you are unsuccessful with the initial detorsion procedure, try rotating the testicle in the opposite direction, lateral to medial, or close the book. Unsuccessful attempts with detorsion require emergent surgical fixation. So that's everything we're going to cover today. I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from you guys. If there's any topics you guys would like me to cover, please comment below or email me at gray at physicianassistantboards.com. That's gray, G-R-A-Y, at physicianassistantboards.com. Until next time.